Hello and welcome to Scott's Garage. For some of you that watched uh, some of my other videos, uh, you will remember not too long ago I hung this big wall map and I just simply put it up with a staple gun and some tape and called it good. Well, I've been looking at it lately. It looks a little bit plain, you know, around the edges. And if you remember the old painting that was here, it had a very ornate frame. Um, I don't want to do something like that, uh, but it does kind of need a little bit of a frame, maybe just a border. Initially, I was going to make a picture frame for it with a backing and put the map in there first before I hung it. But now that I've hung it, I think what I could do is just make a simple frame around the around this and kind of hang it up on the wall, and then it would sort of look like it's a framed picture or frame map. And that sounds like a perfect job for Scott's Garage, so let's get started. So let's start by taking some measurements. If you kind of see the, the white part of this border is where I put the staples. So I think what I would like to do is have the inside corner of my picture frame border right along the transition between the white and the blue and then the picture frame will run out here a little bit. So let me take some measurements and uh, let me see exactly what size that is. There's a few different ways we could go about making a frame for this. Uh, I thought of a lot of different things went through my head when I was uh, envisioning this project. You can go buy, go to the home center and buy some expensive like molding or picture frame material made out of solid hardwood, um, some maple or oak or things like that. And that's pretty expensive per foot. Or you could go all the way to the other side and just buy some press board molding like baseboard molding or something like that, which is, you know, less than a dollar a foot, I don't know, 20 or 30 cents a foot and, um, you know, make something like that. I thought something kind of in the middle, um, a little bit of a happy medium. And so I found this wood and these are, I think like furring strips. I think they're for like, uh, trimming out a door or whatever. They are solid wood, but they're not made to be like finished or whatever. This is, um, just made to maybe like for construction, but if you sort through a bunch of them, you can actually find some pretty nice ones. And, and the other idea I had is um, <clears throat> I wanted this to kind of be more of a rustic look. I didn't want it perfect and finished. You know, it's, it's kind of a rustic, uh, fun. I don't mind a little bit of imperfections and knots and things like that. So I was able to, at Home Depot, I was able to get these for $2.58 each. These are eight foot long, so that's plenty of length to, uh, to make what I want to do. Four of these was a total of $10.32. So I'm going to be able to make that frame for around 10 bucks, not including tax. Uh, if I was to go to a framing store or whatever, a frame that big would be hundreds of dollars. What is it? Four foot by almost four foot by six foot uh, picture frame would be hundreds of dollars uh, to get made at a custom frame shop. We're going to do it for 10 and it's going to be pretty fun because there are a lot of uh, challenges into making a frame this size. And I thought this was a really good project for demonstrating a lot of woodworking skills um, that, you know, everybody can do. I'm probably going to do this in multiple parts. And what I'm going to do is go real slow. I'm not just going to slap this together in a 10 minute video. If you're looking for that, basically just cut glue or screw, put it on the wall. Okay. If that's what you want to see, then <laughs> that's, that's not this video. I want to go through in really detail exactly how I would do a project like this. And there's a lot more to it than I see in many of the how to videos. They seem to make it look really easy and it's fast and there's, you know, they just, it's, it's no problem where there's a lot of thought that goes into these things. So people ask me, you know, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? And they're never ready for the level of detail that it takes 
to really get into a project like this and figure it out. And you think, well, what's there to figure out? It's a picture frame. It's four pieces. Um, let's see. <laughs> Please proceed. So most of the other videos that you're going to find, they're, they're already cutting. They're already cutting wood. So now I put the wood aside. And what I like to do is I like to draw a little picture. So most things are in inches. The poster seemed to be just about 46 by 76 inches. And so I am a visual person. It's really easy for me to, to see things as a visual. So this is kind of what, what the way I like to do it. So we're going to be 76. By 46. So that's the inside dimension of the of the frame but our pieces are going to be kind of like this they're going to go here this is sort of a blown out view of this of this they're going to be sort of like this and this is like times two two of those and then we're going to have two of these so times two. Okay, so the idea is we're going to do top and bottom. And that's going to be a piece that looks like this. And then we're going to do right and left. And that's going to be it's going to basically look the same, but they're going to be different sizes. So we're going to get into some measurement. You can see how old and used my trusty Stanley tape measure is. For y'all who are not in the United States, I apologize, but everything in woodworking is in inches and feet. So I've grabbed one of these pieces because we need to know how wide it is. So it, it's a little bit round it over on this side and this side. So I'm not going to measure it this way. What I'm going to do is turn it over. And actually, I'm going to turn it around this way. And this is a little bit scalloped in here. I kind of think of that as like the rustic look, but also we're going to be routering around this um, quite extensively. So I'm not too worried about that. But one of the really important parts of woodworking is getting your measurements accurate. So this is more of a right angle. So my tape measure will grab on and then we can see more easily that this is two and a half. So two and a half inches wide. And um, I don't really care about the length because we're going to cut the length. Okay, now this is this is kind of a bad Let's make this more of an angle. Okay, so we know that this is 2.5. And we know that this, this is the same, 2.5. It's really good. I mean, you could just start cutting, but for me, it's really good to stop down. Let's do some dimensioning. I will refer to this drawing a thousand times while I'm working on this project. And I don't have to think them through, make mistakes, figure out what the dimension was again. It's all going to be written down here. So that we're going to do, 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 do dimension lines. This is my high school drafting. Uh, I took several years of drafting at Los Amigos High School in Fountain Valley, California. Shout out to... Mr. Lopez, Ralph Lopez, he was a big influence on me uh, in my career. The skills that he taught me in high school put me through to all of my engineering and aerospace career up until this day. I don't know how many years later, 40 years later. I still think about Mr. Lopez and I still can hear, and I can still hear his voice telling me what to do and what not to do. Okay, so 
because this is two and a half and two and a, that's the thickness. So basically, let's let's draw this bigger. So you go like this, and this is like this, and then you have a piece like this. Okay, so we know that this is two and a half, and this is two and a half. So we're trying to find this dimension, this big dimension here, and this dimension here. That's what we're trying to find. Because when we're going to be cutting, it's a lot easier for me to cut on the big end than it is on the small end. It's a little, you'll see when I start cutting that it's a little bit harder to cut on this, to measure on the small end than it is on the big end. The big end, you just drag your tape measure, you hook it here, um, you can read here, and you can tell whether it's the right measurement or not. But basically, we have the inside measurement of both of these, and then we have two what I call material thicknesses, which is two and a half. We have two and a half here and two and a half here. So, because that's the same, if you look here, this distance is two and a half, but this to here is also two and a half. So, if I'm going to add the inside dimension plus this, I just add two of those. So, five inches it makes it really, really easy. I don't even have to use a calculator. So, all I'm going to do to get my outside dimension is add five inches to each one of these. So, this is um, the top and bottom. So this is 76, and this is 46. And so this is going to be 51, and this is going to be 81 inches. Point zero. Point zero inches. Point zero inches. Zero inches. Like that. So now I know I need to make, of course, this is a, let's do this. <laughs> 45, right? So we're going to have 45, 45 all the way around. And so I need to make, um, this is times 2 and times 2. So I need to make two pieces, 81 inches long to the big, out of 45 on each end. And then I need to make two pieces, 51 inches to the big, with 45 on each end. So now I have it all like, drawn out here exactly what I need to make and now I can start sawing. Okay, so a little bit of fiddling. What I did is I, I put the table saw on the right and then I decided, you know, I'm really not going to be using the table saw much for this project. Just make sure that that blade is all the way down. You don't want the blade sticking up because it'll catch on things. So I'm really not going to be using the table saw much for the this project. It's mostly going to be this chop saw, but I really need an infeed table. So that that table saw is going to be my infeed for doing things there. And I'll probably prop it up a little bit to make it level so that when I work on these uh, long pieces of wood, I have some support. So these are going to be our top and bottom pieces. And what I want is I don't want them quite uh, sagging, I guess is the word I'm trying to go for. So just get some blocks of wood here. And we're going to just prop these up a bit so that we kind of have a level surface. So if I... If I kind of do it like that, that's pretty, that's pretty level. I don't want to be fighting that. Okay. Okay. So we're going to set the blade at 45. And then what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to cut out that knot because I have some extra length to deal with. I'm going to cut out that knot. We're going to cut these two at the same time, making sure that I'm backed up against this and not like tilted this way and very flat against this.
Beautiful. This is the first cut. I can take these stra scra straps. I can take these scraps and kind of do a little bit of a test. One of the things I can do is take my square, which is a, a really handy thing to do. And you can, let's see if you can see this. You can look down it. And what I'm checking here is to make sure that my saw blade isn't this isn't tilted this way or this way. There are adjustments where you can do that. You want to make sure it's straight up and down because when these two go together, you want them to meet and not be, you know, and not be kind of weird. Okay. So that's kind of the, the thing there. The other thing you can do is you can put these two together and put a straight edge on here and I'm looking there and that is really straight and or you can put it kind of like this that looks really good or 45 I could put it up to my 45 template and that looks really good so we've got a bit of a wide shot here so I want to make sure that I don't turn it over like this. What I'm going to do is do just like these. So then I can kind of picture, I don't know whether you can see over here, I have it this way and this way, because I'm going to do like this, right? That makes a picture frame. And um, I'm not real worried about the, you know, the top and bottom because it's all going to work out in the wash. But the one thing I want to do, you'll see I have some clamps here, is I want to clamp these together. And so, so I can cut both of them at the same time. That's the easiest way to make sure that you're going to get them right. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're off, as long as they're off the same. I mean, it's going to be close enough. It wasn't really... See, I'm just... I'm actually just feeling with my fingers. Like how aligned they are. I don't even have to look at it. I can just feel with my fingers if these are lined up. And if that is lined up. So then to, it's kind of going like this, the weight. So just put this other one over here. Okay, so I'm trying to hook it on here because I need to measure, what is it, 76, and pull it all the way over to 76, way over here. I'm trying to hold it there, and you can't, right? You can't. But if I want to measure 81 from here, I just hook that right on there, and then I just go. What I could even do is loop it. Loop it through my clamp. Through my clamp. Come on over here. Hook it on there. And I have my 81 right there. And then I'm really right at that. Okay, so what you can do one of the cool things you can do is cut it a little bit long and then sneak up on it so let's see how So this is my setup, got the two clamps, that end side is going this way, so this side is going to go this way, I'm just pulling it from the end, and then I have my 51 mark right there, and then I'm just going to draw a okay, scrap, and then I'm going to key right on this with the edge of my saw, line it right there with that little nick. And again, it's not really important that it be exact. 
Sometimes it is, but for this purpose, it's a real tight up against here, and that's not nowhere near it. So let's slide this whole assembly up. A little, just a little bit back. Just take your time. I'm gonna just do a little bit more back that way. There we go. There we go. I think that's a little bit long. You see the, see the tick mark there. I'm looking that's at the wall good. here. The map, left, right, and I'm kind of starting to establish what's my top and what's my bottom. Okay, so the thing I'm going to do here is line these up and roughly mark, make kind of a center mark between here and here. I want to be roughly in the center, and I'm going to do that for all four. Okay, so this is how it's going to work. Biscuit cutter. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so let's do like this. So this is going to be our test piece. And we made a mark here. These aren't the best pieces, but good thing they're scrap. So biscuit cutter uses biscuits. This is a biscuit. And when you glue this up, um, it absorbs the glue and um, expands and makes a really, really tight joint. So we're going to put this right here, and it's going to make it really easy to line these two up and clamp them. So I think what I'm going to do is do a biscuit and glue, clamp it, wait till it dries, then I'm going to flip it over, and then I think I'm going to do some sort of a bracket. That's why I have these here, like a bracket inset into here. And uh, so that'll really hold it because this is big and gangly and uh, it, it's going to be under a lot of stress. So those joints have to be really tight. So this is a number 20. It says right there, 20. I don't know if you can see that, but they come in all different sizes. So we have our biscuit cutter set on 20. We have this at 90 degrees right here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this thing's a little heavy. And then we have this set at three quarter now i never really i never really measured this i don't think it's three quarter Lenny, what you want to do here is you want to do you want to be half so why this has a little triangle there is because that's set for a three quarter thick piece of wood because that's kind of generally what you're dealing with um, when you are working is everything is three quarter but you say, well, that's not actually three quarter. No, that that's half of it. That's three eighths. So half of three quarter is three eighths. So you have one eighth, two eighths, and three eighths. You have to set that at three eighths, which puts this blade because we're setting the height of our fence here, which puts this blade right in the middle of the workpiece. So because this is five eighths, we want to get half of five eighths, which is five sixteenths. So these little marks are. 16 so one two three four and five so we want to be just that little bit you can see there it's actually not exactly lined up there so we loosen this oh wait loosen this and then we're going to sorry if my head's in the way we're going to line it up with that one and then we're going to lock it down with that one and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a test so I don't know whether, so you always want to do it off the end of something because you don't want this resting on that. You want this resting on this. And what you're going to do is line that red mark up with your red mark here. Off the end of the bench. And we're going to cut. Let me stand up. That looks pretty cool. You 
just like pushing this in and that gets that blade to come out right so we have two pieces here let's get this out of the way and again these are just our test pieces so we would put this piece in here with a lot of, a lot of glue and put that piece there and then we would clamp it up and that is going to make a really nice strong joint so i think that's good to go let's cut the rest of them so i like to cut off the end of my table saw i don't want to really cut on the workbench it's hard to work with so i'm going to kind of set up a little cutting station here I'm just going to take each piece i've already marked them all hang it off the end and kind of do this thing. So let's um, cue some fast motion. Okay, so now for the hard part, assembly. I don't know what, <laughs> what it is about that biscuit cutter, but it, it has like a, it doesn't really have a fan. I think just the spinning of the blade causes like air to blow and that air has sawdust and as you're working it that air is blowing right up in your face so i don't know what it is about so that. eight cuts two on each side times four pieces now comes for the difficult part how do i clamp this up it's not an easy not an easy thing to clamp something this big i i have a lot of quick quick clamps that are much smaller they work great but they're just way too small and so I think I'm gonna have to get creative let's see what I can come up with That's a lot of running around. Okay, so a few things here. Sorry, I'm out of breath. So you got to clamp it from two sides, and I had to get real creative with putting sort of a stopper there because I don't have anything that can go all the way to the end, and it's not clamped terribly tight, but because there's a biscuit in there, I think we'll be okay. And then we have pretty good squareness here and I put the other end piece in there we're gonna have to do it in in two goes we're gonna have to glue this up in two goes so I went ahead and wiped off the glue and then wiped it off with a little wet paper towel um, now this is the front the underside is just going to be the back why I say that is because these bar clamps this black that black metal that's on the bar clamps, that can tend to bleed in. And if I would, if the backside showed on a different project, I would want to put some wax paper underneath there because what it'll do is that glue will leach up the blackness into the wood and then it kind of stains the wood and it's really hard to get out. But if you put a little bit of wax paper in there, the wax paper peels off you can sand the glue and it'll be fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna take this off because I don't want this gluing in place there. And we'll just uh, wait till that dries, probably tomorrow. And then we'll glue up the other side. And then once that's all done, we can decide kind of what features we want. I'm thinking maybe like just a round over on the inside and then maybe an OG on the outside. And we'll go over that next time. But that's the end of part one of our picture frame. Uh, and thanks for watching.